I just discovered these pneumatic actuators on Amazon. I can't believe nobody's ever told me about these before because they're just amazing. They're so useful and easy and high quality and cheap. So I'm going to show you how to build one of these and look at the article for links to how to buy these on Amazon. We're going to start with the actuator itself. This is what it looks like. It's a piston. There's a rod that goes up and down. And there's a seal in here. When you put pressurized air on this side, it pushes that way. When you put it on that side, it pushes it that way. These are called the ports. Uh, there's lots of different size ports. I've been sticking to 1 8 inch MPT and 1 quarter inch MPT because you can easily get the connectors for them. Uh, I've been using these quick connects here. But we'll talk about those in a minute. When you buy a cylinder, it's specified by the bore, which is the diameter of the tube, uh, the inside diameter, and the stroke, which is how far it moves back and forth. So this is 25 millimeters by 100 millimeters. The bigger the bore, the more power you'll get for a certain amount of pressure because there's a bigger area acting that the pressure can act on. And the stroke is really just how far you want it to move. Uh, moving farther uses more air um, and costs more money. To connect these, they usually have some kind of a hole down here that you can put some kind of a pin in to connect them to. At the top, they usually have this shaft, threaded shaft here uh, with a nut, and you can get a thing called a clevis pin. I don't have any of those yet to connect that to something so that it can move. Uh, for adding the air in, I've been using these quick connects they're amazing and they're cheap and they come in little bags and you just screw them into the ports using just like a wrench. This is really the only tool you need to play with this stuff. So once you connect these ports in, then you can make your connections using this hose, which is quarter inch outer diameter, and it just clicks in. Like You don't need any tools at all. You just take the hose and you slide it into this quick connect push it all the way in and it's in there and that makes an airtight seal. I've tested to like 60 or 70 PSI, it holds, it's amazing. No tools. To pull it out, you just squeeze down on that and pull it out, so easy. For cutting the hose, I got a tool like this, just cause it was like five bucks, but you could probably just cut it with the scissors. This tool you just kind of squeeze, it's very convenient and you get a very flat end, which I guess is nice for seating inside the connectors. So you have the hoses, the quick connects, and the piston. The last thing you need is something to control it. This is called a solenoid controller. Uh, this one is a called a five-way two-position. So two-position means it can either go, to the, go this way or this way. There's two positions it can be in. The pressure comes in on this port here, and depending on which position the lever's in, the pressure comes out one of these two ports here that are connected to the sides of the tubes, so to the side of the piston. So when you go this way, the pressure comes here, pushes here, pushes the rod in. When you move this lever this way, pressure goes this way, goes down this tube, and pushes that way. There's also these exhaust ports on the back which are connected to the opposite side. So if I have the pressure going out this one, you need to let the air out of this side of the piston, and that air comes through here and comes out through this exhaust port. Uh, I've been leaving these empty, but one thing you could do is put some kind of a restrictor on there, maybe just loosely thread something in, or I've also seen they have little like foamy things that you can put in there. And what that would do is it would slow the rod from going back and forth. Uh, but with nothing there, the air can come out as quickly as it's going in on the other side, so it kind of slams back and forth fast. But if you want a nice smoother motion, you could restrict these. I don't know, maybe you could recover some of that pressure, use it for something else, or add it to something down the line, I'm not really sure. All right, the last thing is the source of pressure. Uh, you could use any air compressor, but I found this bicycle pump on Amazon. Uh, this one was especially good because it has a air tank built into it. This is designed for some kind of a bicycle tire that needs you to release all the air really quickly. So you pump it up and it stores the air pressure and then releases it when you're ready. But it works great for driving these cylinders. Um, or you could just use any air compressor that you would use for like blowing up a tire or you could use a reservoir where you filled it up. So even just like an old 
bicycle tire, if you blew it up and then connected it to this pressure port, you could run it until the tire was flat. So now I'm going to pump up the pump to about 100 PSI. So now we have 100 PSI coming in on this port here. When I push this lever that way, it's going to send that pressure down this hose to here, which will push on the bottom of this rod here and make it go that way. <laughs> so cool. Uh, and they're really fast and pretty strong. And on this pump, you can do probably about a dozen throws before you run out of pressure. And then you can just pump it up again. So yeah, everybody should be playing with these. So cheap and easy. Take a look at the article for more info.